Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video, and today I will be taking a look at the original Mortal Kombat ports that were released on Mortal Monday on September 13th, 1993. I know I've already made a ranking video on the first Mortal Kombat, but I'm redoing it because some people pointed out, both positively and negatively, that I recited some lines from the Angry Video Game Nerds video. And yes, I did copy a few, but not all lines from AVGN's video. It was a mistake, and I apologize for letting that slip in. And I'm redoing the video with my own thoughts and opinions of the games. And I'm going to private the original video, but not delete it. But now, let's start with the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 1. The Super Nintendo port of Mortal Kombat was developed by Sculptured Software and published by Acclaim, and it seems like a flawless port once you start playing, but before I talk about the negatives, let's get to the positives of this port. The graphics look really good, and they're really close to the arcade original. The voice samples also sound really clear. But that's where all of the positives end for this port. And what's another thing I forgot to mention? Oh yeah, the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 1 was censored. The blood was replaced by sweat, and some of the fatalities were altered. The fatalities were also renamed to finishing bonuses. On every version mentioned in this video, the only characters that kept their original fatalities were Scorpion, Sonya, and Liu Kang. Kano and Johnny Cage's fatalities were awful on SNES. Instead of ripping the opponent's heart out, Kano just rips nothing out now, and Johnny Cage just kicks right through you. But Raiden and Sub-Zero's altered fatalities were actually not that bad. Raiden zaps you into dust, and Sub-Zero freezes and punches you into bits. Personally, I like Raiden and Sub-Zero's censored fatalities way better than their original fatalities. The ending for Sub-Zero was also censored. The line, the assassination of Shang Tsung, was changed to the destruction of Shang Tsung in the SNES version, and the censorship affects all regions not just Japan, unlike with Mortal Kombat 2. But anyway, let's get to the negatives. The controls in this version feel extremely unresponsive at times, and sometimes they don't even work at all. There were so many times where I'm pressing the buttons on the controller and absolutely nothing happened. The AI in later levels, especially the endurance levels, can get really cheap, but not as bad as the AI in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Goro and Shang Tsung are also noticeably a lot more easier than the arcade version. Like, I destroyed both of them in only a few tries. All in all, the Super Nintendo port could have been really good, but there are some issues that ruin the experience, but censoring the game is only a minor issue. But anyway, let's move on to the Genesis port. The Genesis port was developed by Probe Software, and before we talk about the port, let's talk about the controls for the game. The arcade version had a perfect 5 button setup, but the original Genesis controller only had 3 buttons. The A button is both high and low punch, one tap of the button is low punch, and the A button with a combination of left to right is high punch. And B and C are the kick buttons, and start is block. The 3 button setup works, but the best experience is with the 6 button controller, but hey. At least the 3 button setup is way better than the control setup on Street Fighter 2, but anyway. The Genesis version is censored initially with no blood and less graphic censored fatalities, but can remove all that with the blood code, which is ABACABB, and it unlocks all of the blood and uncensored fatalities. The controls are also really responsive on this version, but the main drawbacks are the graphics aren't as good as the Super Nintendo. 
and most of the voice samples and sound effects are missing, but the soundtrack is great in this version, and I prefer it more than the Super Nintendo soundtrack. All in all, the Genesis version of Mortal Kombat is a decent port, but there is some flaws, but there's more positives than negatives with the Genesis port, and it's probably the best one we looked at so far, but now, let's move on to the Game Gear port. The Game Gear version and the European exclusive Master System port was also developed by Probe, and it has a blood code similar to the Genesis version, which is 212 down up, and it has all the uncensored fatalities in blood, and it includes the censored fatalities from the Genesis version if you play without the mentioned code, but there is some issues. There's only six characters in this version, Kano was removed entirely. They really couldn't include one more character, but that's fine I guess. And there's also only two stages, Goro's Lair and the Pit. The Pit Fatality was also disabled, even though one of the only stages in the game is the Pit stage. But the Pit Fatality was disabled on the Genesis version also without the blood code, so I guess it's not a huge loss, and Goro is really small in this version. But the main issue is, the sprites for the characters are way too big on the Game Gear version, but that's fixed on the Master System version, and the movements on the characters are extremely choppy. And there's also only two buttons, but at least on a handheld, it's tolerable. Overall, the Game Gear version of Mortal Kombat is okay, but it's not great, and it's also not the worst. And I saved the worst for last. Here's Mortal Kombat for the Game Boy, which was also developed by Probe, but they obviously spent most of their talents on the Sega versions, and it shows. I'm going to be harsh here for a second, but... The Game Boy port of Mortal Kombat is terrible. Where do I even begin? The controls are extremely unresponsive, worse than the Super Nintendo version. The animation for the characters is terrible. The gameplay is extremely slow and sloppy, and there's only six characters. Johnny Cage made the cut this time instead of Kano. I've already made a video on the Game Boy ports of Mortal Kombat a few months ago, so what else do I have to say? Whatever you do, do not play the Game Boy version of Mortal Kombat. It's easily not only the worst Mortal Kombat port, but also one of the worst arcade ports of all time. Avoid it at all costs. Now, here are all the rankings for the original Mortal Kombat ports that were released on Mortal Monday. And I only focused on the original four ports in this video. Before you ask, where's the Sega CD, Amiga, or DOS ports? I already included all those in my Forgotten Mortal Kombat ports video, which you should go check that out, by the way. But now, let's rank them all, and I'm gonna be quick. Coming in at number 4 for the worst port of Mortal Kombat is, obviously, the Game Boy version. Then coming in at the number 3 spot is the Game Gear version. Then coming in at number 2 is the Super Nintendo version. And finally, coming in at the number 1 spot for the best original Mortal Kombat port is the Genesis version. And that's all I have to say for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.